this article is from the Activist Post, Saturday, April 6, 2013. Antibiotic-resistant bacteria transmits from livestock to humans. Congresswoman Louise Slaughter from New York, the only microbiologist in Congress, reacted to a new study that conclusively identified the transmission of the MRSA virus from livestock to humans. Currently, MRSA kills more Americans each year than HIV and AIDS. The study was conducted by genetics researchers who analyzed the genomes of MRSA bacteria from patients and their farm animals and found the samples to be genetically identical. Published on Tuesday in EMBO, Molecular Medicine, the study confirms that animal to human transmission of MRSA exists. Scary. That's a scary thing. Uh, these um, More and more of these uh, staph infections, these infections that are resistant to antibiotics and the overuse of antibiotics. I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, MSNBC host Melissa Harris Perry, we have to break the idea that kids belong to their parents. Check this stuff out. This is, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. We have never invested as much in public education as we should have because we've always had kind of a private notion of children. Your kid is yours and totally your responsibility. We haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Once it's everybody's responsibility and not just the households, then we start making better investments. Better investments, yes, like um, Obamacare and uh, Solyndra come to mind. So let's put this into perspective. Since President Lyndon Baines Johnson declared a war on poverty, U.S. taxpayers have spent $15 trillion on so-called anti-poverty programs, a figure slightly less than the national debt. In 1969, just 2.8 million Americans received food stamps. Today, over 47 million Americans are on food stamps. Now, soda makers really do well with this program. Uh, they have a $4 billion a year subsidy through uh, taxpayer money through the food stamp program. And efforts to kill the so-called soda subsidy have been met with fierce resistance. In other words, if they are going to be giving you... Uh, Assistance. You should be eating healthy foods, and shouldn't uh, you shouldn't be having garbage? Uh, shouldn't be included in that. And I agree with that. I mean, certainly there should be nutritious things. It shouldn't be junk food. Soda certainly is borderline junk food, if not completely junk food. It's certainly poison if you have uh, aspartame in it. Uh, certainly uh, part of the uh, poisonous substances that uh, the FDA seems to say is safe for us to have for human consumption. I guess that's probably because Michael R. Taylor heads the FDA and he used to be the chief lobbyist and vice president of Monsanto, who of course now uh, have carte blanche and do whatever they want and without any recourse from the government in the, in the event that they their trials kill people for their GMO genocidal products. So stay away from GMO foods, ladies and gentlemen. So the subsidy here for the soda industry has been hit with, I mean, obviously there's a lot of um, rhetoric back and forth with this, and there's a lot of uh, lobbying money being thrown at this issue. In Florida, State Senator Rhonda Storms from Valrico introduced a bill that would keep taxpayer-funded SNAP benefits. That SNAP is the, uh, what's called the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. That's the new form of welfare, uh, food stamp welfare. Um, the biggest opponents right now are Coca-Cola, the soda companies, the chip companies, and convenience store operators. That's what uh, Senator Storm said. State Representative John Wood said a provision was a step in the right direction. We're talking about a government benefit, and therefore, in my mind, we can restrict how that benefit is utilized. In this case, I'd agree, because the soda leads to diabetes, which leads to health problems, which leads to... Uh, medical costs, which leads to Obamacare's hor horrific uh, costs. So it just adds to this overall cost um, of this socialized, socialist country we've become. Um, 
Now they're taking the wealth out of everybody who has it. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Look at the studies here. Now Obama is now uh, taking aim at wealthy people's IRAs. Uh, anybody who has uh, unbelievable. The Obama budget is to be released next week. Will limit how much wealthy individuals can keep in IRAs, and it'll also uh, put a, a somewhere around three million dollars. So if you have three million dollars in your IRA which is really not a lot of money if you're a retired person and you've accumulated that over a lifetime they tell you they're gonna go after that money too they want to tax everything they're gonna take all the wealth out of all the people the retirees and then oh we still can't fund Medicare and Medicaid and we can't let these people starve and uh, and they need health care and we have to cut Social Security but I'm sorry but you know just have to get by on less I see where this is going here with these in continuous uh, taxes uh, endless taxes, taking away the wealth, the spread getting wider. And in the Wall Street Journal, food stamps swell as the economy improves. I mean, so our economy is improving because they're not hiring. Um, and and now that Obamacare is kicking in, they're going to keep people under 30 hours so they don't have to pay the, the fines for Obamacare and providing health care. All these mandates, these forced mandates, these social programs are bankrupting America. It's, anyone can see this. Our debt is... is is unbelievable and we could have paid it off by attacking poverty in a logical way not in this collectivist way where they just stole the money basically and kept the debt imagine that we could have taken care of poverty reduced poverty poverty is the highest levels since this thing started so it was like a big roller coaster it went up and came all the way down it just went up and came all the way down we're back to where we were and and it's 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 even worse. It's even worse. Jim Cramer, not too crazy about him. Goldman Sachs scum, but he even said it best. I mean, this is a permanent. These might be permanent levels of unemployment. Three four weeks ago, the president was on TV pretty regularly saying that look, there's going to be paralysis in the country. We did believe that sequester could shut down this country. Maybe it's under that guise that we got this terrible number. But it is a terrible number. It, it, it's really kind of amazing that, uh, frankly, it looks like it's a permanent unemployed level. Now, there's an astounding 90 million people absent from the U.S. labor force. NPR reports every month 14 million Americans get a disability check from the government. In Hale County, Alabama, ne nearly one in four working age adults is on disability. As of December 2012, 47 million Americans were on food stamps. The USDA assesses the annual net cost of the program at $71.8 billion. Separate from food stamps and apparently not including other members of a household where at least one person is receiving government payments, we have 4.3 million on people on welfare. Medicaid, the government Medicare program for the poor, lists 50.1 million people enrolled in 2011. If you include Americans who were on Medicaid for at least one month in that year, the number swells to 70.4 million dollars, uh, million people. As a result of Obamacare, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services predicts 20 million new people will be added to Medicaid in 2000, by 2019. Forbes magazine states the annual cost of health care in the U.S. is $2 trillion. And yet, concealed from the public, this money is used to wreak incredible destruction on the people. In 2001, a landmark article in the LA Times written by Linda Marsa reported that 100,000 Americans are killed by FDA-approved pharmaceutical drugs every year, and 2.1 million more are hospitalized as a result of adverse reactions to the medical drugs. In all, there are 22 million significant adverse reactions each year in the United States. The Times article was based in part on a July 26, 2000 review by Dr. Barbara Starfield, published in the Journal of American Medical Association, Is U.S. Health Really the Best in the World? Starfield stated that the American medical system kills 225,000 people a year, or 2.25 million people per decade. Of these, slightly less than half are killed by FDA-approved medicines, and the rest meet their deaths as a result of malpractice and errors committed in hospitals. Of course, there are also untold numbers of Americans exposed to GMO crops, fluoride, and toxic pesticides. And then there are the number of people U.S. troops have killed and maimed in recent foreign wars. Economic sanctions alone between the two Iraq wars killed 500,000 Iraqi children. How did this culture of death and disability take over? Could one possibly attribute the great change to a deterioration of principle and its replacement with a sheer intent to conquer, sell, consume, profit, gorge, and cheat, no matter what the outcome? 
given the fact that more and more Americans don't even know what a principle is, it's obvious that a deterioration has occurred. Things are bad, let's face it. Since President Lyndon Baines Johnson declared a war on poverty, like the war on drugs and the war on terror, these never-ending undefined wars that can never really be, be won, that are just a sieve, you know, a whole a, 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 a way of siphoning the money from the people's pockets into the greedy politicians and, of course, the corporate oligarchs who are uh, controlling most of the interests of our great nation, not the people's interests, their own interests, mostly international interests. They're internationalists. Forget the idea of help from central government. It continues to rot as it expands. It enables spokespersons who wouldn't be able to wake up in the morning if they didn't have at least a dozen lies to tell during the coming day. Thank you for watching Truth Talk News. I'm Howard Nima. Thank <laughs> you.